Hey there fellows, Bunny Spike here. This is F16 Cockpit and today I'd like to introduce what all the buttons do and whatever there is to it. And the guy who helped me with understanding the cockpit was Mr. Doctor and he is also the creator of the multiplayer mod which is just spectacular. Huge respects to Mr. Doctor for allowing us to have beautiful flights in multiplayer. This F16 mod is also absolutely free. I'll have the download link in the description and you can just try it for yourself. So without further ado, enjoy the video fellas. So, um, this is Mr. Dr. Surgeon, I'm with Body Spike, and we're going to go over the F-16 cockpit tutorial. Uh, when you start the F-16, your seat position might be a bit funny, as you can see the default seat position here is way too high. So, to actually start uh, the plane and be able to change the seat position, you need to turn on the battery. The battery is on the electrical panel here on the left-hand side, it's this switch here. Right, and then when you start it, it's it starts the APU as well, uh, and then you can adjust your. Normally seat like in this. the other aircraft, you can hear the APU starting up, but for this aircraft, I guess uh, you cannot hear the APU. Yeah, it's like the electrical systems, and I guess this is like the secondary power source. I see. They light up, but for some reason you can barely hear it. Uh, and then now that we've started the uh, the electrical systems, we can start the engine. There's only one engine on the F-16, and it's right. uh, this button here. And you can see the RPM going up. Right. So now it's getting really noisy. I can't hear anything, so we close the canopy with this switch on the left. Don't forget to close your canopy before you take off, because the canopy will get ripped off oh, uh, wow. at high velocities. Does, uh, does a person like feel the wind or something? You you just hear a lot a loud noise like the wind is really loud. Okay. So now that the engine's fully ramped up, uh, we're all set to go. So uh, we'll start on the left here. So here you've got your uh, navigation. There's light. a switch about um, laser or something. Something. Oh yeah. So you're right. So if 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 you want to know which switches are active and which switches are just decorations, you use this switch here, the laser arm switch. And it puts a red sphere. Can you have the laser arm switch on before the battery is on? Because let's say yeah. if you want to find that, find where the battery is, you can just yeah. turn on laser first and then turn on the battery. Correct. It will help you find the switch. So starting here, you've got your navigation lights and strobe lights. And here's your refuel port. The refuel port is actually on the back uh, behind the cockpit. Right. So when you're refueling, you have to be a bit lower than the other planes to let the boom reach. Now that we've got this started, let's make your lives a bit more comfortable. Oh yes, please. And we shall get a better view. Now it's a bit more smooth, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so now we've covered here, so let's move forward. This is a comm switch so you can uh, have voice recognition commands that are built into VTOL. Right. And this panel here, you're able to change the frequencies. Uh, I don't think this panel is implemented yet for multiplayer, but the button panel here can change your frequencies in multiplayer as well. Right. This is the engine switch. So this switch here activates your head-mounted queuing system. So uh, let's say we have the HUD on. This is the HUD. We can't see the HUD over here. So to see that, you put your visor down, and then you activate the switch. Right, so you need to have the now, visor down and the switch turned on. Yeah. And this allows you to not only see this data, but you can then uh, reliably use the uh, head-mounted queuing system for, like, IR missiles. Right. Uh, so up here, we've got your RWR mute button and your chaff and flare selectors, so you can disable one or the other. Uh, this is the parking brake. And the landing lights are actually functional. They're not labeled here, but they're useful for uh, landing at night. We can't see the effect during daytime very clearly. Uh, this big stick here is a gear, and you can actually have gear lights, so you know if your gear is up or down. Uh, so the Jetson button works through the MFD screen, so you can't really Jetson immediately. You have to go to the um, MFD screen for your equipment and then choose mode Jetson and then select what you want to dump. So I'm gonna dump my air to air missiles and they've just nice. fallen off. 
Uh, as you can see, there's no flaps here. Uh, the F-16 has auto flaps. Yeah, it seems uh, modern jets have started to, yeah. you know, have. Yeah, uh, flaps I mean it's automatic. based on angle of attack. I guess if if it's got high angle of attack, it engages the flaps. Right. Uh, I guess it reduces pilot workload, reduces the chance of errors. Here you've got a load of sort of analog instruments. So that's your AOA indicator, vertical speed, altitude, and speed. And this actually acts as an instrument landing system as well if you contact the airport. So we'll, we'll cover that once we're flying. Uh, here you've got a mini panel. That can be your RWR. You can't switch it to anything else. And you've got two attitude indicators. And there's a green screen on the top right. Oh yeah, so uh, that green screen is called the data entry di display. And you switch it on with one of the big knobs on the right here. And that shows you the frequency. Uh, in multiplayer, you can change it with this panel by pressing clear. Right. And then typing the numbers in. Uh, in single player, you do this, but it's not really functional. Then you've got vertical speed indicator. You've got real time. Not in-game time, but actual real time. That ah. So you know how much you've been wasting your life <laughs> playing Vito. <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> um... And then you've got more light switches here. So this is the brightness for your MFDs. And this is the instrument lights. This looks really cool, especially yeah, at night. Yeah, yeah. I just instrument like it even during beautiful. the daytime. Just looks amazing. Uh, this is the RPM nozzle position stuff. So you can see how strong your engines are working. Mm. And this is kind of cool. So you've got two indicators for your fuel. The white one is internal fuel. And then the red one is your external fuel tanks. Nice. So when you have external fuel tanks, the red one will go down first. And then the white one. And you've got a mini compass here, just in case your MFD breaks. Right. Oh, actually, you've got a mini clock, analog clock down here that uh, works. And this also shows you the real time, like your... Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, it's pretty it's late one over here. o'clock over here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this switch here is called sensor power, and it's basically the radar. Uh, so right, let's right. switch on the radar, and you can see it's switching. The F-16 is pretty cool because it's got the longest range radar in VTOL. Nice. As you can see there. Uh, this is the altitude mode, so ASL versus radar altitude. Kind of useful if you're flying close to the ground, so you don't mm. hit stuff. We've turned on the data display, we've turned on the instrument lights and the console brightness. This one is called flood lamp. And it's basically a cockpit light, yeah. Uh, so you can find stuff in the dark. In case uh, you drop a pretty, pencil. That's pretty much it. So let's get in the air. Uh, the takeoff procedure is basically very easy. Uh, basically, parking brake off, and you just taxi onto the runway. Should we? Should we? Should we employ proper etiquette and tell ATC? This is VTOL here, serious business. Yeah. <laughs> and let's get rid of this. Okay. And uh, Full throttle. Let's, let's go mill power and show off how good this is at lifting. And as you can see... Oh, at 100 knots you're able to take off. Yeah. Landing. Such a light plane, so we'll put the landing gear up. And as you can see, if you engage high angle of attack, the flaps engage automatically. The mm, leading edge okay. engages. Nice. So, let's cover weapon system employment. So, the master arm switch is this switch over here. And that immediately goes to your gun. Uh, the HUD modes are almost the same as normal VTOL, but the weapon names are slightly different. So, optical fire forget is AGM. Bombs are whatever bombs you have, but it doesn't actually give you the name. Uh, and the cannon has the same amount of rounds. So, the cool thing about bombs is if you have the head-mounted queuing system on, you get a CC uh, IP point even below your HUD. So that way you can uh, bomb stuff out of your sight. Uh, so if you have your TGP on, and then you do head mode, uh, you can sort of aim at stuff, lock it up, and then make sure you hit it by aligning the bomb with your square. 
Right. So we okay. So uh, you can see the square of your TGP yeah. and of your target, okay. and then you line up the bomb. Boom. And you can see the bombs falling there. We'll just go in a circle pattern. Good thing I missed the hospital. <laughs> oh, there you go. The F-16 has a hook. Uh, it's not in real life. It's not carrier ready. It's just a hook for emergencies. But in this game, you can land it on the carrier if you want. But there are hook for emergencies. Uh, yeah. So if uh, some runways have cables at the end, so ah, if yes, you yes, if you run yes. out of runway, you can uh, you can hook yourself. So it does not have drag shoot, but it has hook. Yeah. Let's uh, contact tower and uh, show off the instrument landing system. Let's. Oh yeah. Uh, there's autopilot as well, so I'm gonna switch that on. So you've got oh, okay. roll hold and pitch hold, mm -hmm. but there's no altitude or speed autopilot. So we're gonna do ATC. If you if you have pitch hold, that'll be same as uh, altitude hold anyway. I guess yeah. But I guess if your velocity is low and you're you're losing altitude, it probably won't be able to compensate. Yes, yes. So we've got the instrument landing system activated. Right, it's uh, gonna uh, as help you know, align to the runway. Okay. Yeah. So as you know, you line up your plane 90 degrees to the course line, and then once you reach it, you turn into it. That way. That's it what you call nice ILS instrument. approach, correct? Correct. Instrument landing system. So as you can see, I'm trying to line up with the course line. I'm not even looking at the runway. And then I'm gonna. Decrease altitude to get the alti uh, altitude line lined up with the yellow. About a hundred knots. Oh, that's meter per second. Ah, okay. Yeah. I thought it was knots. So this gives you the perfect sort of glide slope. Oh, I'm too low now. And you've got an AOA indicator on the left here. Yeah. So I see, as you can see, I'm not even looking at the runway. I'm just gonna trust my instruments. Okay, you know what? I understand today how you use your velocity vector. It just helps you, uh, like, where the plane is going so that yeah. you can better predict your path. Hmm. Yeah, and, and the problem is it only applies directly to the sort of sea level. So if you're landing on a carrier, it's not accurate to where you're going to land. It's actually sort of oh. beyond the carrier. It could also be because so, the carrier is moving as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, but on, on land it's quite reliable. So now that we've landed, uh, let's put our parking brake on, switch off our engine, Batteries turn the power off, off, open the canopy. So when you turn the power off, the lights didn't turn off. The... Oh, you're correct. Oh, we need to report that bug to the developer. <laughs> let's see if the switch works. Oh, it does. It, does <laughs> it goes on again. Yeah. Maybe it's radioactive, you know, like those tritium bulbs. Yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the kind of video I want to make in future as well. For VTOL, we are using mods and uh, doing some combat missions. So if you do like the video, consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Buddy Spike, out.